down, down they go. Into the darkness of the grave, gently they go. The beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly they go. The intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve. And I am not resigned. In 1951, a woman died in Baltimore, in America. She was called Henrietta Lacks. These are cells from her body. They were taken from her just before she died. They have been growing and multiplying ever since. There are now billions of these cells in laboratories around the world. If massed together, they would weigh 400 times her original weight. These cells have transformed modern medicine but they also became caught up in the politics of our age. They shaped the policies of countries and of presidents. They even became involved in the Cold War. Because scientists were convinced that in her cells lay the secret of how to conquer death. In 1860, a plantation owner in Virginia, called Benjamin Lax, took a black mistress from among his workers. She bore him two children. They took their father's name, and for three generations, the Lax family worked in the fields. Then, in 1942, his great-granddaughter, Henrietta Lax, decided to move to the city. She took her husband and family to Baltimore. It was wartime, and there was money to be made. She was known to all her friends as Henny. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I could top her. Henny was a beautiful girl. I was beautiful myself. I called myself back in them days. But Henny was very, very pretty. Beautiful face, round face. And I used to mind her dressing, because she used to dress real fancy. I dressed good, too. But she had a husband, and she could fold fine dressing. And she liked pretty things. She likes nice things. The cells stop growing. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes something happens to start them growing again, uncontrolled, dividing again, outlaws. Pressing on healthy tissues, healthy organs, growing, spreading throughout the body to start new malignant colonies. is cancer. Six miles away from where Henrietta lived was the laboratory of Dr. George Guy. Dr. Guy's ambition was to rid the world of cancer. He was convinced that the secret of how to do this lay inside the human cell. For 20 years, he had been trying to grow human cells in test tubes. Dr. Guy's simple dream was to be the first to successfully sustain the growth of human cells outside the body so that in test tubes the secret of cancer cause could be exposed and once exposed altered and corrected the key dr guy believed was to feed the cells on chicken blood he did this by drawing blood from the heart of live chickens he then mixed it with cancer tissue taken from patients in Baltimore's main hospital. His aim was to persuade the cancer cells to keep growing outside the body. Each time he filmed the results, but every attempt failed. After a few days, the cells always died. Then, on February the 1st, 1951, Henrietta Lacks was taken to Baltimore's main hospital. She had been sent to see a gynecologist. I just happened to be the one who saw her uh, when she first came in. And her um, history was very simple. She had had some intermenstrual spotting and, and bleeding, which uh, is a sign of cancer, but it can be a sign of other things too. She was generally fine. There was no difficulty with the general examination. But on examination of the cervix by the eye, with a suitable instrument. I was extremely 
um, impressed, and I can see that lesion today because it was not like an ordinary cancer. This was different. This didn't look like cancer. It was purple, and it bled very easily on touching. I'd never seen anything look like it, and I don't think I've ever seen anything look like it since. So it was a very special, different kind of, of what turned out to be a tumor. Cancer? As usual, a small piece of the cancerous tissue was cut off and taken to Dr. Guy. I was eating lunch. We always ate lunch right in the laboratory next to the mouse cages. And a doctor guy came in with a Petri dish and he said that there was a specimen to put into culture. And what he had left me was a chunk of tumor tissue. And I took my scalpels like this. These were sterile and the tissue would be in a Petri dish like this. And you just cut it up just like you're cutting up some meat. And then you added, according to his formula, so many drops of chicken plasma, just like I had done all the others. And lo and behold, it grew. Henrietta Lacks's cells began to do what Guy had dreamed of. They started to grow in his laboratory. This is the film he took of their first week's growth. Henrietta was sick. She was sick. You could hear her sometimes all the way downstairs, Holly. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I can't get no ease. Her stomach would be hurting her so bad. Jesus, help me. Help me. I didn't never hear nobody say that she had cancer. Nobody. You know, that was a secret word one time. If people had cancer, they didn't talk about it. They didn't talk about it. They were afraid. These are Henrietta Lacks's cells filmed six weeks later. Each cell is now dividing every 20 hours. For any cancer, it was a record growth rate. The cells exhibited the same growth in the test tube as they exhibited in her, namely that they were unstoppable and continued to grow in a very special way. So it was the first human cell line. Her tumor, incidentally, did not respond well to treatment. Henrietta Lacks died on October the 4th, 1951. Tonight, we will learn why scientists believe that cancer can be conquered. That same evening, Dr. Guy appeared on a television science program to show off his breakthrough. Now let me show you a bottle in which we have grown massive quantities of cancer cells. As he held Henrietta Lacks's cells up to the camera, his assistant was in the autopsy room. Dr. Guy had sent her to get more of the precious cells from the dead body. And I was all alone with my Petri dish. And I walked in, and she was all completely open. Um, and just, you could look in and see tumor everywhere on all the tissues, and her bladder was one complete solid mass of tumor. We will show you some actual pictures of colonies in a test tube of cancer cells such as those I just showed you. It is quite possible that from us fundamental studies such as these, that we will be able to learn a way by which cancer can be completely wiped out Henrietta Lacks's body was taken back south to be buried. Dr. Guy kept what he had done a secret from her family. He was worried they might sue him. He gave the cells a code name, Hela, H-E-L-A, and told everyone they came from a woman called Helen Lane. Henrietta Lacks was forgotten by science, but her cells were about to become world famous. For the first time, anything could be tested on living human cells. Her cells were sent into space, accompanied